Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of the Argus Saga. And today I have, uh, I think, a nice video for you guys because I hope again a nice one. <laughs> because we're gonna repot two Miltoniopsis and I'm going to plant them in a self watering setup. The setup that I uh, use for my Argus, basically all my Argus, ex uh, f with an exception for my Vandas. But um, yeah. I found these, uh, I think, last week, yes, last Friday, and I really like uh, like Miltoniopsis, and I don't didn't have these two guys. I will show you a close up for the other one uh, in a minute. But uh, so yeah, I really need to have them, of course. <laughs> so I bought them. But I think these uh, flowers. Let me grab the other one as well. Are kind of small for a Miltoniopsis. So that was the first sign for me that you can see in comparison with my hand. I know there are different sizes there, but in general speaking for a Miltoniopsis, um, this is kind of small. Um, so that was a sign for me that the orchids probably weren't in the best conditions. And I'm going to cut off the flower spikes anyways, because I hope you can see it the bulbs start to desiccate but luckily we have a new growth here and no this one only has one at this moment yes but that's enough soon there will be uh, come new roots therefore uh, and it's time because it's desiccating itself um probably because of the the media i don't know it's not very it's kind of sturdy in the pot so that means should mean that the are quite some roots but still it doesn't work apparently um, very well this one also has a new growth here and I thought that this one yeah it has two possible eyes there and here inside in the middle is another new growth it's kind of hard to see but this one has two I'm gonna start uh, off with the uh, white one first white and pink one purple one and we will do the other one in a second. So I'm gonna put it, well, let's put it on a shelf behind the camera. So it isn't in a way. Okay, so uh, yeah, I thought it would be nice to show you guys how I uh, repot Miltoniopsis and how I transfer them into self-watering setup. Obviously, I uh, I think it's nice and I would uh, will do some updates uh, later on during the time and the uh, adaptation time. But first of all, we uh, need to get it out of the pot and see what we have inside the pot. And this is uh, now. Oh, wait, I have a light here. I have a light. Let me see. Yeah, it's kind of a bit of a difference. I'm in my new orchid room, as you may uh, already have seen. So I need to uh, get used to it a little bit. But I have installed a light today, especially for filming. And especially in winter, uh, in the winter months, and it's a bit darker. Okay, I uh, keep these guys. I'm not using them myself, but if I have a giveaway and I need to stake something up, it's always useful. So therefore, and they are already here, so why not um, yeah, save them for another time? I don't use them in my self-watering setup because it's wood and. Most of the times, uh, within a few days, I have mold starting on that wood, so I don't like that, obviously. So therefore, I uh, give them away. But I don't like them uh, having them there while I'm repotting. Um, I will grab my scissors. Whoops! I have. I have this long scissors, long handled scissors. I really like uh, these guys. I can really uh, get in uh, narrow places with this one. It's already, I always sterilize it when I put it in, uh, put it back in a, in a drawer. So I can now use it uh, directly, but I also have my alcohol and my hydrogen peroxide per <laughs> my hydrogen peroxide uh, ready to go. But, oops, there it goes. Beautiful blooms, and I have done this so many times. So yeah, it's 
not hard for me anymore. I am uh, going to uh, save the blooms and put them in a, v a little vase for uh, indoors so I can enjoy them, enjoy them a little bit longer. Okay, here we go, another beautiful spike. But yeah, I will keep uh, a note of this and w hopefully one day it will bloom again and we will see if the blooms do, got, uh, do get a, a bit bigger. And in this spray bottle I have my alcohol and in this spray bottle I have my hydrogen peroxide. This is for um, this, uh, disinfecting the tools that I use and this is for the roots. And um, Miltoniopsis do have a tendency to have uh, bush snails in the pot, at least this is my uh, experience. So therefore I, li I like to use the hydrogen as well to get rid of those and the, and the, the eggs. They, uh, they may be in a pot left by the slugs and the bush nails. Whoops, it's very wet. Yeah. And we already have something here. Yeah. Uh, just right above my finger. Oops, I'm making a mess. It's a little warm, a worm or something. So yeah, it's not good. Really needs to come out of this pot. And I did forget to put on my gloves. Sometimes I use gloves, sometimes I'm not. But with Miltonias I like to use my gloves because of the uh, extra animals we get <laughs> when we buy these guys. But anyhow, I will wash my hands. It will be okay. Yeah, smelly as well. Yeah. And incredibly wet and we also have very dark colored moss here and moss pluck that I don't like. But what I do like is here we have a branching root system. That is beautiful. I start giving these guys when I bought them. Every single orchid that is new in my, uh, that is new in my collection, I start to give them seaweeds to try to um, get this started. I don't know if it was the seaweed, but I wouldn't be surprised. I get incredibly beautiful results when I water with seaweed. Just oral water and some bit of seaweed in it. I will do that after I repot it to keep this uh, going. But most of the times I see new roots or starting new roots after about a week or so. Not always, but quite often I must admit. And I was really surprised in the beginning when I started do doing that, but it really works. And this one can use it, trust me. It's very, very dirty. It's just basically mud that we have in here. What is this? Just, just a second. Is this a bush nail, you guys? No, it's another little worm. Seriously, I hope my camera can focus on this. Oops, I need to be there. You see that little, you see me moving? Blah. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Another one. Ugh. Oh, I should, <laughs> should have wear my gloves. Anyhow, just continue. Oh, and another one here. This one is covered in those guys. Ugh. Seriously, that's why the blooms are very small, I, I think. This plant is not was not happy in this pot anymore. Ugh. I'm sorry, I don't like them. In the garden I don't have a problem with worms, don't get me wrong, because I know them and they are not harmful. I think these guys aren't either, but yeah. There's a little white ones. Some roots are luckily uh, still kind of firm, so I can work with that and hope that this Miltoniopsis will continue growing those roots or um, start to uh, extend them. That would be nice, but the Miltoniopsis doesn't like interruption um, with the root section. But yeah, this just had to be happen because losing the plant is um, 
not what we want, so we don't have a choice sometimes. Yeah. This was bad. So yeah, this is this is a new uh, growing tip. I hope I don't break them. I will uh, wash this under the tap, and I will be right back. So, just a second. So, I'm back. I think we are uh, getting somewhere now with this one. It looks pretty clean now. I just had it under the tap and give it a good rinse. I found a very small seedling bulb here that was covered in the dirt, so I did get it off. And we have a nice clean horizon, so that's good. And um, yeah, I'm gonna cut a few of those roots off. Try to let the good ones on, of course, but sometimes I think I have the right root, and actually I have a wrong one. The right root in this case is a root that doesn't uh, is alive anymore, of course. But I sometimes cut a, a a live root off. I think it happens to all of us, but especially with uh, the ones that are a little bit uh, finicker, finicker, blah. As the rest, we uh, want to keep the roots on as most as we can, of course. But yeah, it happens. And yeah, this one goes as well. This one. And sometimes I leave roots on. Well, actually, only the, uh, the inside the axle root in any uh, velamen anymore. Uh, let me, where was my exact pole? Well, let's grab this one. So, if you only have this piece, I'm sorry, too much distraction in the background. Only this piece. We don't have the velamen anymore, you only have the axle root on, on it. I sometimes leave them on. I don't know if it really helps, but especially on orchids that do not have much roots anymore, I just leave it on and maybe it can uh, drink some water and feed itself some uh, a bit. Little interru interruption there, but I'm back. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, though, sometimes I leave those roots on. But I don't think I need to do that with this one. It has some roots, so in that case, I prefer to take them off, so I have less ability, uh, possibilities to get some rot in a pot. Because old roots uh, do rot as well, of course, and I try to avoid it as much. Especially now, because I have the orchid in my hand, and I don't want to repot it and repot it again, of course. Therefore, I try to, uh, yeah, think about it. Which one I do leave on? And uh, I'd rather have a few less roots in a pot than roots that uh, too much roots that start to rot. Because that has so much influence on the whole complete pot. If you have rotting bacteria, etc., in your pot, that may uh, infect your other roots. And if you have too much, it will affect, infect the uh, other roots. Therefore, uh, yeah, just take your time and really try to uh, find your better roots. This one is dead as well. Yeah, very dark colored wise, most of the time, not always. So I still check them by uh, squeezing. And if they feel mushy, I uh, take them off. If they kind of firm, I leave them on, just in a regular repot with every uh, orbit I do this, this kind of treatment. And I think you see it a lot with other growers, it's basically the same uh, procedure every time, but it's very important. Um, this one can go, I just cut it off as close as I can by the rhizome of the orchid. This one the root is damaged too much. These. Let's 
it's actually kind of firm. It's a bit brown, so I thought, oh, it's an old one. No, it's not. Yeah, it's probably an old one, but it's still working. This one isn't, so I'm going to take that one off. Mm, this one is... Yeah, that one can go. And let me feel. Firm, this one isn't. And let's move over to this side of the orchid. I hope you all can see it well and hear me well. Like I said, this is a new setup for me, so if there are any problems, please let me know in the comments below so I can uh, fix them. I know when I'm concentrated, I have the tendency to talk a little bit uh, uh, less louder than I should. <laughs> it's basically I'm talking to myself. I do that a lot obviously, but I don't do it uh, as loud. <laughs> so thereby maybe the microphone has uh, some difficulties to pick it up. If that happens, I apologize. Yeah, I need to turn this a little bit more. And always remember we have a new growth, so where do you put your fingers? Easily turn it around, but you would probably wouldn't be the no, you're not the first, you probably wouldn't be the last who broke off a new growth because we are so concentrated on the roots and we're turning the orchid and we grab it and grab it and snap. There it goes. And yeah, as you might know, might know, and Miltoniopsis is a very slow grower, in my opinion at least. So therefore, I uh, try to keep it, uh, the new growth on as much as I can. It's now June, so yeah, this, if this ever blooms, you never know, but I don't think this new growth will uh, bloom. I don't, I'm not sure, but I, I don't think so. So we may be e even, if everything goes right, have new blooms next year. Not completely sure, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Especially when they are not in good shape, they like to take their time and I think that's a good idea, but still, I like to see the blooms, of course. But yeah, a non-healthy plant, uh, letting those, that plant bloom is, is not a good idea. So therefore, I need, my need to have my patience. Uh, yeah, I think we, uh, this is it for now. We have some roots left. And we have a few, I hope you can see that, a few green, there where my thumb, a thumb is, um, bits, new new bits, new starting uh, root tips. And we have one here that's a little bit bigger, I think you can see it a little bit better. If those start to continue to grow in this new setup, that would be amazing. And we have even a little tiny new green tip there. So we have... Quite a, uh, yes, there's one, quite a few of them, I think about five, six at least. That's, that's very positive. So what I do now, this is my hydrogen peroxide and I'm going to spray it fairly well. If I spray it, yes, wakes up. And especially in between those bulbs as well, try to find their hiding places, those little worm things. I don't like them and possibly some snail eggs I want to get rid of so I like to spray it quite quite heavily at least this heavy you can see probably the drips of the hydrogen on those roots that's what I want and yes I hear it sis so I Put this one back into the sink and we will grab another one. So this one can really have its time to uh, fizz and sis and uh, clean up everything before I start to repot it. So I'll be back with the other Miltoniopsis. 
So before I uh, start uh, working with the, the other uh, Arcus, I just uh, not did a very good clean up, just a bit, but I sprayed it very well with, uh, with the alcohol. Um, normally I make it sure that everything is, the mud is, everything is out. But these guys were in the same uh, tray when I bought them and uh, they are from the same seller. So if they are have a disease, they probably both have it anyhow. So therefore I uh, leave it uh, like this. But what I will do is I will uh, disinfect my scissors just to be uh, a little bit more sure. And this is one that's quite dirty. So I'm gonna wipe this off. It's very dirty actually. And I'm going to spray it one more time. Normally I just spray it and uh, let the uh, evaporation do its job. So I'm going to put it in the back and leave it there for a second. What I also do, will do, is grab some gloves. <laughs> I learned my lesson. Okay, let's, oops, there's no, that's not my thumb, that's my thumb. And here we go. Okay. This is the beautiful uh, purple one with a very beautiful dark heart, dark uh, center. Um, if you know any of the names of these orchids, I'm really interested. Uh, if you don't forget, I will put up some names that I think they might could have been. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if, if you recognize them and you are pretty sure, please leave them in the, the names in the comment section. I really appreciate it. I like to have the names for my orchids. And that's basically because when I talk to somebody and I say, yeah, I have that archive, you should have it. I can uh, look up a picture, for example, because I know the name of the archive. That makes it a lot of easier on the internet, if you know the name. And also, I uh, keep notes of all my archives. And it's handy to know which one we're talking about. So therefore, uh, I like some names. If they do not have names, I uh, give them a, a number, but most of the time a name made up with a number. <laughs> I just like uh, giving them uh, names. Are you curious what kind of name? Well, actually it's not, not that fancy or anything, but the last one I have is a red one. And I, I didn't name that one, but uh, somebody on a Facebook group um, did say it was uh, called the Skyfall. And I know you are a subscriber to my channel. That's a good name. I like it, Skyfall from uh, Adele. That's the red uh, Miltoniopsis, I have it in one of my videos. If I'm, Don't forget, I will show it to you on, uh, on the end of this video. Okay, but first uh, we're going back to the repot. Coco Nusk, Coco, Coco Nusk, Coco Husk. Yes, <laughs> there we are. Stuff type of materials. Beautiful stuff, I think, but I cannot work with it. Don't like it for my setup. But it's okay because these orchids uh, are uh, not that expensive because this stuff works for the greenhouse or for the for the uh, sellers. So it's okay by me. But uh, yeah, personally, I don't like it. It's so so thin. There's there's. I like to have a little bit more air for even for the Miltoniopsis inside of the pot. It's just a feeling. I think they like it a bit more. We will go uh, come back on that, that subject uh, when we start uh, putting them up again. I will talk about the media that I use and why. But uh, yeah, I like some air in those pots. And I have no idea if this takes too long. I try to talk about things while I'm uh, repotting. But uh, yeah, I personally like uh, repotting videos, especially uh, when uh, the person is uh, working with, with an archetype or, 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 or um, yeah, an archetype that I uh, like. It's very interesting and you can get, get some great tips on how to grow them and especially. So therefore I like my repotting videos. I watch them uh, quite a lot, obviously, but yeah, it's basically repeating the same stuff, but still there are some differences here and there, depending to the grower. So that's why I uh, like to keep watching them and refresh my memory. If I have, let's say, 
say I didn't bought a Miltoniopsis for years, it's very handy to have uh, some videos that help refresh your memory, I think. And also, I grow in self-watering, but there are obviously more growers, but a uh, Miltoniopsis, I don't think there are that many, but I think there are people starting getting more into the self-watering with uh, Miltoniopsis, sis. and that is making me very happy, because that's something I'm very interested in. But yeah, you have some who grow them in bark, sphagnum moss, etc. Must admit, I watched them all because I just like it. But yeah. I don't want to do this too quickly because I don't want to break too many roots. Same story as in with the other one. If we have some growing tips, and yes we have... No, not. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought I saw the growing tip. No. Not at all. Uh, no. This one might have uh, a bush snail in it because it looks like something is was eating these roots. They are looking new, new tips, but there is nothing green on it anymore. So yeah, this one uh, it was time to uh, for a repot. Okay. Yeah. This one. This one doesn't have the uh, sphagnum moss, I think. No, I don't see the plug in there. Okay, I'm gonna rinse this again on the sink. It saved me some time and I will be back. So, and they had their shower. And now <laughs> I have two plants. I really thought I had two plants in one pot. Turned out I didn't. Uh, here's a rhizome cut. Um, but it's okay, i rather had it as one plant, I like that, I like the bigger plants. But it has new eye growing there, so it was, it did fall apart quite easily, I must uh, say. And also, um, this piece, um, here is the, uh, the breaking point, just above my finger. But here already were the new growths, especially this one was right above that so I think it was a natural kind of natural uh, breaking point dividing point to uh, yeah to basically divide this plane but anyhow if I know better but I thought the roots were tangled up too much so uh, yeah but it was uh, a one plant and now I'm thinking of yeah and I'm going to get rid of those two as well they are kind of in the way uh, here you go. Yes, they have a lot of roots, of, roots on them, but they are all uh, dead. Even the white ones, you can see there. A lot of um, velamen is missing. I hope you can see it. So yeah, it's okay. I uh, I didn't want them in a pot anyhow. And um, yeah, I need to cut quite a lot of roots on this one, sadly, but. This is a new root. This is a branching root. We have another one here. So this one has already started to make some new roots as well. Okay. Well, first of all, let's um, cut out the flower spikes. I completely forget uh, to cut those off. They are getting a little bit in the way now. Oops. So I'm going to cut those off first. The last one. Oops. And there we are. And now I will cut off quite some roots. But not all of them. This one is branching as well. This kind of big root is branching. So yeah, let's start cutting.
they are almost a little bit grayish. Not only brown, but there's a little bit of gray in there as well. I don't see that that often, I must admit. Maybe because of the media or the feed that the seller has been giving them. I don't know, but they are kind of gray. I don't know if you can see it, if it does show up on camera, but... Yeah, these look like new roots, but they are uh, mushy. So sad. This whole lock I probably is not. Only that word. All of these guys need to cut off. And yes, we need to do this. If the roots are not working, they have no they do not help the plant anymore. So therefore you need to cut them off. You will regret it, in my experience, if you don't do it. So I'm kind of radical about it. But once it starts to make a root system, it has all the room. It has a healthy environment to grow those new roots. And like I said with the, with the other one, if you have a lot of rot in the pot, it doesn't work. And it can cost you your orchid in the end, if you don't do this. So therefore, cut them off as much as you can. Now don't get me wrong, only the bad ones of course. <laughs> but yeah. Um, that's okay, this one is not okay. Can go. And no, I thought that shot a bush nail, but it wasn't a bush nail. Luckily, I think this is it for this one. Oh, actually, this one is dead as well. This one, oh, I have even a few more that can go. This one is broken. Uh, oops. <coughs> Okay, hydrogen peroxide, this is the wrong bottle. Just gonna do this as I did with the other one. I'm gonna spray it fairly well. Get as much on there as I can. Even on that wound that I created there. Just gonna spray it. I will put some cinnamon, cinnamon on it later on, but first I try to uh, get it as clean as I can. Flower spikes can go as well. I cut these above the last eye, or probably the second last eye. So if there if there is any, any infection, the arc itself will stop it at the eye. They can protect themselves. So therefore, I didn't spray my uh, scissors again. This is the same arc. But I cut in some roots so I can thereby transfer some uh, bacteria back to the flower spikes. But I never had a problem. The orchid uh, will seal that itself. So therefore I cut right above basically an eye. I, I call it an eye. I think you call it an eye. I'm not even sure. But yeah, you can see it here. Like uh, you would do with a family abscess. You would may count them, I don't count them with my family office, you may cut it here and you may get a branch there. These guys do not branch, if, uh, at least not that much. So therefore I just cut it, but it will seal the wound itself. That's very handy. This leaf is a bit dirty. A bit uh, yellow, I'm sorry. There are some new growths. Possibly new growths there, who might be triggered by me uh, dividing this orchid. It wasn't the plan, but I did it. 
yeah, we shall see. Okay, back to the roots again. Yeah, a lot of old roots here as well. Well, I'm gonna cut them. Yeah, can go. Here is a new one there, so I'm gonna leave that. Try to not to damage that leaf. Can leave those on. That leaf? Did I say leaf? I'm sorry. That root? I don't know. <laughs> but I said okay. Um, can come up. And this one as well. No. Just in time. That one. I thought it was a new root, but it's actually a branch of an older root. So I cut it in time. That I didn't cut it. Yeah, anyhow. You know what I mean. <laughs> um, this one can come off. And this one as well. This is a sad root as well. Okay. There you go. Oops, another one. We all are almost there. I'm gonna cut these as well. Um, yeah, this one is. It can branch. I don't know if you notice what I did, I just cut it a piece of that root off because this end is still okay, so I hope it will uh, start to branch in the pot. Um, there's some media in there. Piece of bark, whoops, that can go. Okay, I think we're done. So I'm gonna spray this as well. Green bottle is my hydrogen peroxide. So here we go. If I uh, accidentally would grab my alcohol, that wouldn't be a big problem. And I smell it right away, so I, I only uh, would uh, squeeze it one or, once or twice. But I, it did happen just a, uh, uh, one time, but the orchid is still alive. <clears throat> so yeah, that's okay. Yes. Sitting. Okay, so I leave them uh, to fish and sis and whatever. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to uh, clean up my mess, and I will be back with you guys with a uh, not a setup. This is for me the most fun part: putting them up again. So let's start that beautiful fun part. <laughs> so I'm uh, set and ready for the repots. Are they actually up putting? Uh, first of all, let's go over the materials, materials that I like to use. This is uh, one of the two medias that I like to use for uh, putting my uh, Miltoniopsis. Uh, actually, this is lava rock, teeny tiny lava rock. Let me see if I can let you see it a bit more up close. Whoops, here's my camera. Beautiful little pieces of lava rock. And yes, little teeny tiny leca beans. Very small, I think uh, two, yeah, I think two to six millimeters, something like that. Very small. I had this laying around, so if I'm using this, normally I would prefer a uh, the pumice. I really am a big fan of pumice. So we have uh, pumice in this side as well. But like I said, I had laying uh, laying around this, uh, so therefore I thought let's put it to a good use. And um, yeah. I, uh, it saves a little bit uh, on the uh, on the money front, of course, and um, I really like Syntec with uh, my Miltoniopsis. It's basically a uh, synthetic moss, and if you are interested, you can look it up. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of this stuff. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's very soft the touch and like I talked earlier while we were on putting them I like this mixture of those two because this is very uh, gives me quite some air in a pot 
and the other, uh, the Cintiq is very wet. So therefore I get a nice wet, complete wet um, material inside of my pot and it's very wicking so it will uh, get that water right up um, around the edge of the pot so I don't have a dry, a dry layer here which can happen when you uh, are uh, growing in cell watering or semi hydroponics but this, these two are working really well for me so okay that's my media then we have the pot Basically, I have the two same the same pots. Only the sizes are a little bit different because the one orchid is a little bit bigger than the other one. And these are from the the brand Halo. That's enough Halo. Uh, <laughs> I want I want to buy Jack. Okay, <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. But it is a very good brand. Um, well, I'm actually not kidding. If you're from Halo, uh, please uh, contact me. Okay, enough of this. <laughs> we have an inner pot and this is a 15 centimeters pot for the biggest one, actually the two pieces. This is my water meter and uh, I will put it in so it will give me an indication of how much water is in the reservoir. I must admit with these cheaper guys I like to get this cap off with the measurements on there, I hope you can see them. So this red thing it's already stuck this is what happens it gets stuck in those in these things I don't know what happens to this one this one is too small oh look it's completely let me fix this and I will be right back <laughs> it was very quickly done but um, here we go again so yeah that's with cheap stuff you always need to check it I now have pulled it to the hole and luckily I did it now can you imagine when I had it potted up seriously I had to repot the whole thing but now here it is and it will come out yes so that's what I uh, sorry I'm back to the original story I have these caps are on there I get them off I put it in a pot like and this and what happens this red, red stick will come out depending on the level of water but they have the tendency to get stuck quite easily in inside of this so I can tap it with my finger and if it drops quite quickly I know I have to water my uh, orchids if I have some resistance if it goes down and it go, comes up again I know there's some water in there so that I get these caps off because it really annoys me but yeah it happens <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's because they are a bit cheaper, I, I think. I don't know. Okay. What I also do, you may have seen me done this before, maybe not, but I will demonstrate it as well. I have this thing, I have no idea. It's a cutter, it makes holes in things. <laughs> I think it's more uh, used for leather and that kind of stuff, but I use it on plastic. It works but you have to push a little bit harder and I want a hole there and I will show you in a minute why I want that hole there I will have to push it through a little bit with some force I'm sorry this is out of camera and just wiggle it and eventually it will come through but not today of course because I have the camera running why not <laughs> let's yeah, you can peel it off quite quite easily. I have a little hole there now, and that's what I wanted. Because I have my cable ties here, and I will put a cable tie through that hole, tie it together, enough that I can uh, have my finger in this. And I don't like the look of this strand on there, so I always cut it off. There you go. So imagine I have my orchid potted up, I have an outer pot, I have an inner pot and I have this thing. This is purely just to get my orchid quite easily out of its pots. I can pull it like this, then grab it with my other hand and a voila, we have my orchid. As you can see when I put it in, it's a bit lower than the outer pot. So therefore it's very hard to, to get your fingers around it. It will be easier now but once the once the orchid is in there you won't uh, want that trouble I think so therefore I came up with this idea it's very simple very easy and you can pull it and hey voila there is your part 
So I will do it with the other one as well in a minute. But we're gonna put uh, an arcade up because this video is uh, already quite long, I think. I'm sorry, but I try to explain as much as I can. And um, I like to start out with a layer. Let me grab this one. So you can see. I will adjust the camera angle a little bit, just a minute. So I think this is a little bit easier to see. I have a little plate underneath it before these, these things get everywhere because they're so tiny. And we have some holes in there. So I need to cover those holes because anything will uh, fall through quite easily. <laughs> so therefore, oops, there it goes. So I will cover it first with some Cintiq. And I don't push the Cintiq just like Marsh. I don't want it uh, as one clump of uh, Cintiq. I want it very loosely. So if I put in this uh, um, lava rock, it will fall through the holes and keep it nice and air, airy, I should say. Okay, I need a little bit more Cintiq. I see some holes still there. I try to hold this uh, straight up, this water meter. It's especially when you start Working like this, it's a little bit um, annoying, but you get used to it, I think. <laughs> At least I do. So, and I have this little scoop thing. So I can uh, grab a little bit more. And no, I don't forget my orchid. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I just want a, uh, a first layer of media in there. This is about the water level. If I have it completely filled up, it will be around here. The roots will be above that. And so I, if I water it, those all the roots who are already now on the orchid will not lay in water. It's very important to keep the rot uh, not from happening. Okay, I think this is enough. So now it's time to grab my orchid. This is the big pot, so I'm going to grab the two pieces that we worked uh, last on. And like I promised you guys and the orchid, I will use some cinnamon. So let me grab the cinnamon first. I have it in this teeny tiny pot. <laughs> I don't know where I did get it, but I like it. Maybe some jam or something was in it. I don't know. But I like to keep these things. <laughs> it's so stupid. I know, but it's now it's very handy because I can have my cinnamon in it. But I, yeah. And in general, don't s throw stuff away if you can reuse it, right? So therefore, here it is, reused and well. So, let's grab some cinnamon. Try not to put this cinnamon on your roots. It will dry your roots. That's not what we want. We want a nice dry cut there on the rhizome, not on the roots. The roots need to take up water. So. No cinnamon there. I hope you can see this. This little brown spot. That's the cinnamon. And that's enough. Okay. And yes, maybe you wonder what if you now start to water your orchid? What will happen with that cinnamon? Was there somebody who was asking that question? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> but anyhow, um, um, I don't water this orchid. I may only floss a little bit of water and then I will uh, leave it uh, for um, probably two days before I start to water. The cinnamon will have done its job by then and if I floss a little bit cinnamon out of the pot that's okay. But that's uh, so I don't start to water it uh, immediately. If I did I just to try to avoid that uh, spot of the rhizome. Just keep it dry and with experience it is, it's doable. Trust me you can, uh, can avoid that. Okay, what I do now is I watch my new growth. I have one here, I have one here. Probably two there. And probably one there, but also there. So it's very hard to pop this one up. Maybe something like this. And what I was trying to explain is that I want to leave quite a lot of room around my new growth so it can stay in here probably at least hopefully for two or two three four years that's the plan you always need a plan right does it always work no it doesn't <laughs> but it's okay as long as the orchid is healthy and happy 
I don't mind uh, basically up potting it. That's what we do now. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that lava rock, a little bit of that Cintiq. I just pull it down like that. I'm sorry, this is a little bit oh, not handy. But I just I'm not pushing it quite much. I do a little bit um, synthetic in the back. Not too much, but I have new growths there as well. If I only had new growths on the front, I wouldn't put so many uh, synthetic in the back of the arc because it it doesn't help your architect. It doesn't grow there. It doesn't it grows around the new uh, new growth. So therefore, I like to have my synthetic there as well because synthetic is very wet, it holds quite a lot of water, so I need something there to take up the water and that will be the new roots. So therefore I don't put it in the older places of the orchid because there are no roots anymore. So it doesn't make sense to put a lot of synthetic there. I rather I also do a top layer of petals like yes, Annabelle does from the orchid room. I uh, copy that from her, it really works well. And in cases of all the bulbs on the back of the orchid, I like to cover, well, to surround them with pebbles. Let's put it that. I don't cover them up with pebbles, but I like to surround them with pebbles. And I'm just shaking it so everything can fall into place. I'm not pushing it hardly, just a little bit. I'm tapping, so I let, try to let it fall down into the media. This orchid was a little bit too low. So I pull it up a little bit. And here we go. I think this is kind of good already. Just a little bit. Let me see. Yeah, I'm happy with this, actually. So I'm going to leave it like this. Um, the only thing is that the pebbles, like I talked about. So I'm going to grab some pebbles. I have them here somewhere. Yes. Pebbles there. Need a little bit more. It's wiggly. It's moving inside of the pot because it doesn't have many roots. So we need to do something about that. Orchids don't to like don't like the uh, moving inside of the pot, especially uh, when they start to grow new roots. They kind of break easily. As you may have know, but I think I uh, need to mention that for for people who uh, are new here and new to orchids. I uh, kind of repeat myself. Let let me grab a stick or something. Um, yeah, I never. I don't know if I ever talked about this. I use these kind of sticks. They are covered in something, shield in something. It really works, so don't, I don't get rust in it and it's hollow from the insides and i really like this these are knitting for knitting used for knitting I, I don't know how to i think yeah i'm not really sure how to you call them but uh, i think you know by seeing this whoop where we go here we go no there we go <laughs> with this point it's used for knitting and this these are the cheaper ones so maybe you have a story if you would like to try them you can cut them and these are hollow inside like I said so you can now put a wooden stick in here if you need to extend your uh, stick inside the pot in case of the orchid starts to uh, bloom you can extend this very easily without having mold or um, rust in your pot just a little tip there and now I'm trying to avoid the roots so 
I put a stick in there and I tried, like I said, to try to avoid the wood. roots and I will have a uh, wire around the orchid. So I can support it. And I like the green wire, so I don't think it's very obvious. Uh, it doesn't, yeah, you cannot see it very clearly. I like that. So therefore, I use the green stuff. It doesn't, uh, I don't mind seeing this on the orchids. Other colors sometimes may uh, pop out a little bit too much for my liking. And this is better. Still not as incredibly stable. I will not move it uh, around too much, obviously. So thereby it should be okay. So what I do now is I put it in a uh, side of its outer pot. And hold it a little bit, let it go into it very slowly. And here you are, this is the first one. A first repot. I'm not going to water this uh, today. Probably, like I said, in two days because of the cinnamon. So I'm now going to pot up uh, the other orchid as well. Let me grab it quickly before I put it in a pot and I, th it's the same process so I will leave it uh, uh, for now uh, the up potting part with this so I will be back with the end results on both of them I think uh, it's a little bit better time wise because otherwise my videos do get quite long but um, yeah I will be back I'm gonna up pot this right away and I see you in a second so okay I have potted the last one up as well it's this one and I thought it would be nice to uh, do a last close-up because there was something that I did forget to mention that is why this leaf is still here this leaf was around that new growth and let me zoom in I did take it off so thereby if this new growth starts to put out roots they are going directly into the media and not uh, that cannot always happen when the leaves are still on there Some Sometimes they do break through, but sometimes they start to get aerial, and I don't want aerial roots, especially not on my Miltoniopsis. So therefore I did it, um, did take those leaves off, but I didn't show it, so therefore I kept that leaf so I can talk about it. I think that's a plus to do when you have the chance. We have some uh, new roots, or uh, older roots branching here, I should must say, but you can see now how much... Uh, Cintiq I have versus uh, the lava rock and here we have that beautiful new growth on that root it's still it's still okay I hope I don't mention damage it too much uh, I will put a mark here just to uh, keep an eye on that root it would be nice I think so we can see if it grows or not but yeah, this is about how it looks with the top layer of pebbles. And this one is probably the same. But it has a bit of bigger pot and a little less roots. Normally, if you grow organically, yeah, we have some roots here as well. Oh, I'm sorry, some roots here as well. If you grow organically, um, you shouldn't be potting them too big. But within self watering, it doesn't matter that much because the system is completely the same. Basically, when you are growing organically, and you don't want to put them into bigger, too, uh, too big pots because they dry up too slowly. These will stay uh, wet once they are uh, adapted to the system anyhow. So therefore, it doesn't matter if it's wet. Uh, like uh, this far or this far, it still is wet. It's basically the same. So therefore, it doesn't matter at all in my experience. Not, not even a little bit. It just doesn't matter at all. So yeah, this is uh, how I like to put up my uh, Miltoniopsis. And don't forget, if I don't have the Lava Rock or the Tiny Aleka, I go for Tiny Pumps. And before we go, let's zoom in on the Skyfall. <laughs> like I promised in the uh, beginning of this video. It's this beautiful purple or red one that I still need to repot. But this one is doing so fine. You can see it has very big blooms in comparison to my my own one, this is the Diana, Princess Diana. Those rooms, uh, rooms, those roo uh, no, not roots, blooms, I'm sorry, are very huge. So this, this is a very healthy plant, nothing wrong with it. So yeah, just keep letting it bloom, enjoy the blooms, 
and then I will uh, report it. Okay, if you have uh, any questions, like always, about how I report my uh, Meltoniopsis or anything else, please leave them in the comment section below. And we will do uh, some updates on these guys. I hope they will take off quite quickly. Well, let's see in a few weeks. For now, thank you for watching and uh, yeah, I hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.